This is a 2015 Sargo 25. It's the baby of the Sargo range. And we're going to do a full walkthrough tour right here, right now. It's the small boat with a big heart. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Before you get started, check out our Parker Adams Superstore with loads of main brands for upgrading your boat, such as Raymarine, Garmin and Fusion. Check it out after this video. I'm Jonathan Parker from Parker Adams Boat Sales and I'm really excited to show you this Sargo 25. Um, it's actually, um, it, you've got to remember, it's a 25 foot boat, 7.85 metres. And um, um, because it looks like all the bigger boats in the range. They've managed to make this look like the 28, the 31, the 33, and the 36 Sargos as they get bigger. The, the look of them doesn't really change. So you would assume when looking at this on paper that it's actually a big boat. It's not, it's a small boat. And you've got to appreciate the fact that it's a small boat but it has great sea keeping capability. So it's actually a category B offshore boat. It has an inboard diesel D4, 260 horsepower engine um, with bow thruster, it's radar, it's autopilot, it's anchor windlass. It has all these attributes as a big boat does, but it's in a small package. Now I quite compare this really to a, um, to a, a an Axapar 28, but, a more rugged version of the Axapar 28 um, because you get sort of limited accommodation um, but you get this appreciation of a really good seagoing boat easy walk around easy to use easy to single hand which i hopefully will get across on the video um, now the sea keeping capabilities are due to its fantastic build and hull design so as you can see from where you're looking, the actual hull has got a really high freeboard for the size of boat. And I am walking around, so if I stand up, um, I'm walking around, you can see it comes up to my knees all the way around. It's given a very, very safe walk round, um, as well as through heavy seas, the hull cuts through and displaces the water very, very well. Um, so it's a really good, small seagoing boat. Um, you can access from the sides, and from the back as well. But as I walk around the front, um, there's a cushion that can go onto here as well for grab rail around. It's a really nice little seating position I really like. And we can see the way the windscreen works. It's got three wipers. Whenever you look at other 25 foot boats, a lot of them are sports boats, American boats, uh, well, English boats as well, but all kind of sporty type. But you, it's very rare to get a 25 foot, really smart, seagoing boat in this sort of style. Um, so it's quite a rare boat as well. Um, they have an open bow. So Sargos traditionally, they do a lot of bow mooring um, and bow an and anchoring as well. So you can actually, the anchors offset. Um, so you can actually more get on and off the front. In fact, I can get on and off the pontoon from here. Look, look at that. Get back on again. So it just gives you that extra um, bit of um, practicality. The anchor locker is nice and big, easy to get into. And it's a, a windlass as well. And um, the windlass can be controlled um, at the helm. Um, so the windlass is controlled at the helm and you can see it's just here. Um, as we go round, nice cleat positions and again easy to get on and off of a pontoon as well. Being 25 it's, it's quite a nice height so you can get easily get on and off and put you straight into the helm position though. So what's so nice about this is that if you are single-handed you just step out, it's a cleat here, you can tie straight onto a cleat and you're in a good position and you can sort your lines out. Um, so it does have a holding tank as well. I mean the heads um, and there's a holding tank pump out just under the floor here but really nice neat walk around but then you get round to the back and you've got this gated entrance at the back um, so which you can open and you've got a really big bathing platform area as well and even place to store fenders. Um, Sargo always put a hatch in here. And this isn't storage, this is open to the water. And what it is, because you have a stern drive on here, it always gives you the option being able to lift the stern drive and just checking and clearing it if need be. If you get a foul propeller or anything like that, the big platforms that you get on the back of boats always restrict you from being able to just do things like that. But Sargo have thought of that because a lot of these boats will go offshore, they'll go to remote places, and you need to be able to look after yourselves. So they're built for robustness, they're built for reliability, but also practicality, which is why you get additions like this. And even with the blue rubbing straight around, in case you knock it against things as well.
So very, very much thought of practicality. Um, and this sort of leads into the, um, the cockpit area. And um, there is seating all around. The current owners have actually made cushions to go onto these as well, hence the poppers, um, but they're still in the bags. They're not put out at the moment. Um, it may look nice, hot and sunny here today, but it's not. It's January 2024 in the UK. Um, we're in Hamilton Marina on the south coast, um, but, um, um, but it's freezing. It's like it was five, minus five last night. And uh, so I've, I haven't got my gloves on at the moment. They'll be going back on as soon as this video is finished, so I'll show you that. Um, but there is a nice little bit of protection here. So if you do want to sit at the back, there's a nice little bit of protection from the sun if need be. Um, but actually, me sat here in the sun uh, on a very cold day, it's warm. I am warm sat here at the moment saying that. The sun on me, it's a lovely position. I think I'll just stay here. Okay, let's carry on, let's carry on. So, um, surprise it or not, there's actually quite a good sized locker under here. Um, these are the cushions um, as well. They're done in a nice grey silver text colour. Um, there's also some spare lines, there's some safety equipment in here as well. So it's quite a big locker to store away everything. So it's quite a neat um, idea. Um, and then I do like the additional seats are nice as well, but also they've got little rope lockers in. So you can store the ropes down into here, very easy. Um, I do like these stainless um, fender holders as well. And that leads down, I might as well show you the engine. So if we just lift up here, huge engine hatch. And then you can see the D4260 in here, very nice and neatly fitted out. Um, you can get all around the engine, very easy to get out all aspects of the engine, which is always the problem with a lot of, again, with other types of boats, is getting around the engine and doing your maintenance. But everything's stowed away neatly, on all the trunking and the pipe works all neatly away. Um, very nice, robust setup. All right, let's put that down. Um, it's quite a quick boat as well and it'll do um, sort of around 30 up to around sort of 33 34 knots um, with a clean bottom so you're cruising it's around 25 knots something like that so a nice speed to the boat as well and economic and bearing in mind that your um, your equivalent sort of size boats um, might be inboard petrol or outboards a bit like the Axapar 28 they're all outboards they're sort of 300 or 350 horsepower outboards some have twins on um, so not the most economical of engines where the diesels are very economical and uh, and of course nicely stowed away as well and the reliability as well of a diesel and um, this back window is nice size and is opening so you can open this up and so you can have a nice ventilation through there there's even storage for boat hook and there are lights here as well for evening sat out here as well. and there's also a table position so there's a table pedestal and a table that will fit here as well i don't know where that table is is it inside the table's inside for it so we'll work our way inside uh, i'm gonna go this way you can go that way if you want right and as we come in there is an even sized door on the port side as well as a starboard so you can go all the way through which is really really smart um, and again it gives easy access doesn't matter what side you're mooring on you can easily get to either side and it leads into then your inside seating area a nice curved seating area there is an addition that you can spin the helm seat round to join this area as well. And this one does turn a bit, it doesn't go fully round just because of its positioning, um, but you can sort of get it out of the way a little bit. So if someone is sitting here, they haven't got their, their elbow against here. Uh, but a nice little seating area. I do like the fact that it's quite elevated. Um, so your social area, again, you're sort of elevated outside. So again, if we go to um, a sports boat, if you go from the cockpit down below, then which is where your sort of your extra sort of seating and everything in your galley sort of area is you're kind of down in the depths of the boat but here you're still inside and be able to look out so on cold wet days you can be inside with the heating on so this has webasto diesel heating it's on at the moment so i'll come into a nice warm boat as well um, and um, and there are you can start to see the sort of quality in here as well so we've got these nice wood finishes in here and even they've gone to the trouble of covering the headlining as well and there's LED lights up at here as well. And, um, um, and then we can see there's lights and speakers for the stereo. It's also, this encompasses your sort of galley area. Um, because if I start lifting things, let's lift this up. There is a single hop and it's a, um, how's it feel? 
Is it oil filled? It's a that canister, alcohol canister. Is it an alcohol canister? Yeah. So it's alcohol yeah. canister. If this little hangs up. Oh, so yeah, so that lifts up. Right, okay, we're getting this down. This lifts out, and then that fits neatly into here, like that, it's your hob. And then you've got a nice hot and cold sink, just here. Um, and then um, you've got a heating vent here into the cockpit area, and heating control on this side. Um, but then also there's a nice fridge with a small freezer compartment here as well. So again, so going back to um, usage, uh, if you go back to that, so don't think of this as a bigger Sargo in a small area. Think of it as an equivalent to a um, any other sort of day boat, if you like. So it's a day boat with added utilities. So you've got a hot and cold sink, you've got fridge, you've got heating, and you've got the option of cooking on here. Um, but it is all in a compact area which is great because again, it's a small boat with everything that you would want on it, but just more compact. So let's put the, let's put this back down into here. And that neatly folds down like that, that will close up. So again, you can get everything out of the way. So you don't need to use all these things all the time. This then lifts up and the boat's called Puff. Okay, so you might have noticed there's cushions with puffins on and there's even a nice little picture here of a puffin so if you see puffins around the boat's called puff so that's why it is um, but also we've got the doors open you can open the back window but also can open the roof and i really like the fact how this is made i don't know why but i'm just really pleased with how chunky this little lever is just to do like a simple thing although there we go this whole roof opens up completely so it's not a small opening roof it's a big opening roof so you can really appreciate that so now um, again on a hot summer's day you can open the whole boat up it's nice and cool and you can get the flow through as well especially if you open the back window also so very smart close it back up and um, there are different positions for opening as well you can just slide it a little bit and lock it off there if you just want a bit of ventilation or you can close it all the way just like that and um, while we're up here again this sort of type of boat you tend to find a lot of the instrumentation is actually high up so it's eye level so high up eye level rather than having to look down all the time um, so we've got a depth reader here and we've got your engine controls including the hours so the boat's only done 214 hours so again, for the age of the boat, very low houred boat indeed. Um, there's a remote control for the anchor. So you can see there, weren't, there wasn't a handheld control down there. You can control it at the helm, but also you control it by remote. Um, and we've got the Sargo instruments, which I always like the Sargos because the main switch switches on all the batteries and switches them off. So there, there are electronic switches in the engine room, which will switch on the different banks of batteries. So of course it has a couple of banks of batteries for the domestic and the engines. So they are separated. Um, and then you've got bilge pump. There's your anchor control from here. And then you've just got other controls like water pump and um, pump out for the holding tanks. Don't forget, it's still got a holding tank. There's a gauge for the holding tank as well. And there's a water gauge this side. And then on this side, there's a gauge for the holding tank. Um, and um, um, the holding tank's not terribly big, but useful enough that you can use the boat in marinas and things like that, and you can use the toilets. So let's um, head down to the front cabin section. Just take my shoes off. Got a feeling I'll be lying down in a minute. Let's head down. And this is where this cabin, um, compared to say an Axapar 28, is actually, you've got more headroom. So on an Axapar, you've got to get under and you're actually inside a very low space where this one has got much more head you can sit up fully in here and you've still got loads of headroom above you um, it's a v berth as you can see um, but the cushions on this side continue all the way down and there is an infill for this area which is here so if i wanted to make this um if i get this single cushion this will fit into here and i can make this a larger bed if i need to and so quite a neat solution on a small boat to actually add in this but this isn't the only sleeping compartment there's actually a bigger sleeping area believe it or not on this boat we'll show you in a minute 
Um, but actually, the one th other one thing I want to show you is the heads. And um, the heads again are down here, quite compact. Let me just grab that off you, Nick. Thank you. So Nick's helping. Say hello, Nick. He's got his hat on and his gloves. He's nice and warm. Um, I just want to show you the heads. Um, so manual toilet flush. Again, hot and cold sink and light in here um, but you can't stand in here so the only downside is you can't stand in here you can obviously sit quite happily um, or you'd have to scooch right over um, if you want to if you want to go to the toilet standing up um, but there is a switch to go from um, holding tank straight out to sea if you wanted to um, so you can divert quite easily while you're in here um, there is a heating vent in here as well which is quite neat actually because uh, quite a lot of time on smaller boats you only have a couple of heating vents but there's a heating vent in each cabin oh, clip that back on it's a heating vent in each cabin um like you can see here um, and in the heads which is very unusual indeed i do quite like these little touches so these are little hooks which you flick down quite like that very smart indeed um, and again they've done the headlinings quite nicely in here and there's a nice shelf all the way along just for storing bits and pieces um, and then you've got access to bow thruster and things like that under the bed now if you if you just swap places so if you just yeah if you just step down there for a sec uh, i just want to show you there's a neat little cupboard here so there's a nice drawer for your cutlery Again, all very nicely finished and another cupboard for bits and pieces and you can see they've got sort of carpet panels on the floor so you can remove them if you're going to have muddy feet or if you don't if you, you can keep them clipped down um, but then right okay so then there's the other cabin it's quite an interesting solution to not a lot of room um, so I'll move that forward um, that straps round and this whole thing then goes up now underneath here is your table so you've got a table under here and this can use out here do we use that one outside as well or we can use it outside and we step down well bear with me so it looks like i'm going into a small space but it's actually a big space and then you can come down into here and the full width then of the bow is and i've even got a light here um, is another bed and it is a double it is a double bed now, a lot of people might not like this because you know you are quite enclosed but in fact if i was to sit up you can actually sit up in here so you can sit up so it's a very neat solution to having um, a bit of extra room for sleeping um, but this is great storage as well so if you did want to just use the boat as a day boat this is great storage you can take the cushions out and just have it as a big storage area um, so very very neat is there even a um, but I do like the way it's designed um, and it's just using the, the amount of space that it can. So again, it's a nice bit. I'll load down again just to show you. As I always say, I am six foot. I've got my feet at the end and I've got about another foot above my head, I reckon. Um, so loads and loads of room. And there's opening as well. And again, this is very neat and tidy. Um, so let me then show you how to close it up. So I like the fact it's even got a small door here, look. So you can close up the door um, that unvelcros and drops down and that kind of then locks the door in place like that you can step on out um, your table is easily removable you just twist that and the table will come out and again quite a nice condition table nice size as well not too big um, the table pedestal normally fits in there they've just stowing it um, down there at the moment and that then drops down and then that flicks down and then you're back into your seating area never knowing that there's anything down there at all so again great storage one of the things i do like actually is the helm position let me show you that drop that down as well so this is really what it's about um, so um, Sargo is a very, very good design, and if you pull that knob, look, the whole helm comes to you, including the engine controls and the bow thrusters, so everything comes to you, and you can basically sit here quite happily um, driving the boat. It's very, very neat. Um, the bow thruster, it's a very, it's a very powerful little bow thruster. 
um, engine controls to hand. This also has automatic trim tabs. So the trim tabs are automatic. Being a single engine, it'll have a tendency to lean to one side or the other. Um, crosswinds as well, the boats have a tendency to lean, but it has auto trim tabs. So it'll adjust the trim tabs to suit the boat and keep you nice and level as you're going along. Um, and again, all your wipers. Um, this also has defrosters. So the heating also diverts up to the windscreen. So they'll keep the steam off of the screen. Um, and I do like a knob on the steering wheel. Oh, sorry. Let's lock that off properly. I do like a knob on a steering wheel. So when you do your steering, very nice and light and easy. I do like it very much. And we also have the hybrid touch Raymarine chart plotter as well. And this does have AIS. Um, so let me just zoom in. Oh, hang on, what was there? Uh, let's just zoom in. And you can see the AIS targets on here. So it's got AIS, um, we've got autopilot as well. A great addition to a small boat like this, because this is a sort of boat you can do long distances. So you can do long distances in comfort, any time of year and almost any weather as well. And quite happily, um, you do long distances on auto, just have sitting here, keeping a good eye, look out, um, but then also socializing as well. It's a really, really smart little boat. I do love this boat. Um, I would have it myself um at a, in a blink of an eye um but if you want to see how much this boat is come and see us at park adamscouk um subscribe to our channel please and um, we've got loads of other videos and we've got videos of the bigger sargos as well um but if you want a, a sub eight meter boat with sea keeping capability economical reliable with loads of kit and accommodation um then you can't really beat this especially for the money as well so Come and see it at parker-adams.co.uk, get in touch, and if you like this one, watch all the others. But again, I'll stop waffling on. Apart from to say, middle of February, we've got Boat Life at the NEC. We've got a big stand there. Come and see us, come and say hello, and uh, we can talk to you about all the different boats we have for sale. We've also got a Parker Adams Superstore, um, so we can sell all the equipment now. You'd want to do any upgrades to your boat as well. We'll have a lot of equipment on display that you can play with at the show as well. So please come and see us. Um, but hopefully see you on the next video, if not in a few weeks' time.